There are few actors out there who have the magnetic levels of charisma that Jeff Goldblum does. And it's this charisma, combined with his excellent acting talents, which have made him a worldwide superstar for years now. With well over a hundred roles under his belt and multiple award nominations, there are few who would argue his abilities. Starring in some of the highest grossing movies of his era, it's about time someone took a closer look at this amazing actor's filmography. In this list, we will be taking a look at the top 10 Jeff Goldblum movies of all time. Does this look sick? Does this look like a sick man to you? No! Stop it! You know any sick men who can do that? Come here. Number 10, Vibes. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Duh. A woman's, her husband's back eight, nine times. Yes. With his often strange cadence and unconventional looks, it can be easy to forget that Jeff Goldblum is a great romantic lead. After all, he certainly showed it in 1998's Vibes, where he played the role of Nick Deasy, a psychic on a journey to find a source of mystical energy in the Andes. And along for the ride here is his co-star, Cindy Lauper, with the two proving to have great chemistry together as they go from one adventure to the next, all the while slowly falling in love. Of course, in reality though, the two would not get along. In fact, Lopper would later state in her memoir that she and Goldblum flat out didn't like each other, making their performances all the more impressive. Yes, one moment please, but an important one. We've been through stretch, stretcheroo, next will be stretch mark, where will it end? Number 9, Into the Night. Listen, I'm gonna uh, go home and try to take a nap. If I don't come back, can you get another ride? Sure, absolutely. Go home and get some sleep back. By 1985, Jeff Goldblum was just about to break through into true superstardom. And as it happened, one of his final steps towards getting there was his performance in 1985's Into the Night. But why was this so great? Well, after accidentally getting caught up in a drug smuggling scheme that involves the Iranian government, Goldblum's comedy skills really get a chance to shine here. That said, he wasn't the first choice for this role. No, instead, John Landis had originally wanted to go with either Jack Nicholson or Gene Hackman. After each of those fell through though, it would turn out to be a blessing in disguise for the director when he saw what Jeff could do with the character. It's hugging those strawberry. It's delicious and good for you. Number 8. The Lost World, Jurassic Park Just fed. I assume you're talking about Eddie. You might show a little respect. The man saved our lives by giving his... And his troubles are over. It may not have quite the cultural footprint that the original does, but 1997's Jurassic Park sequel, The Lost World, remains a hugely underrated film. Of course, a large part of the reason it works is because this time, instead of being a side character, Jeff Goldblum's Dr. Ian Malcolm finally gets to take the lead. And that gives us plenty of opportunity to get to know him and his family better than as they try their best to survive the dinosaur-filled island of Isla Sorna. But had things gone wrong the way Michael Crichton, the writer of the novel the film was based on, wanted, this one might have never happened at all. And that's because he'd actually killed Ian Malcolm in the Jurassic Park book, only then to retcon him back into existence for the sequel once he saw Goldblum's performance. Hey, what the hell you think you're doing? I'm taking a kid. If you really want to stop us, shoot us. Number 7. Deep Cover Felix, if there's a problem, we'll kill him. I'll kill him myself. Nancy, get out of here, get out of here. By the time the 90s rolled around, Jeff Goldblum had become something of a household name. And so, using his notoriety then, he was able to help get 1992's deep cover off the ground. How did he do this? By offering his star power as David Jason, an attorney moonlighting as a drug trafficker whose fate becomes closely intertwined with our lead character. That said, while it remains one of his lesser known hits now, it certainly wasn't treated as such at the time. No, back then, it was acclaimed by a number of critics, with many singling out Goldblum's performance for being both out of place and working perfectly at the same time. This is too... Ooh! Ooh, it hurts. Why does it hurt? Number 6. Igby Goes Down Yes, she did leave a note. Well, of course she did. Sweet Mimi! As the new millennium came, so came a whole new generation of movie makers along with it, and always wanting to keep his finger on the pulse of what was current then, Jeff Goldblum would be happy to work with a lot of smaller up-and-coming directors at this time. So that was what led him to take the role of D.H. Baines in 2002's Igby Goes Down, a role which saw him play the purported stepfather of troubled teenager Igby. Of course, while their relationship may be strained at first, over the course of the film, they grow much closer as various revelations come to light. But that's not the only reunion which takes place here because, in reality, it would also mark the second time Goldblum got to work with Bill Pullman. And what was the first movie they worked on together? Well, stick around and you'll find out in a moment. Igby.
Ruby, my boy. You look a bit, uh, peaked. Number five, Independence Day. They're communicating with a hidden signal. They're going to attack. Paranoia. It's not paranoia. The embedding's very subtle. It's probably been overlooked. If Back in the summer of 1996, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing someone talk about the biggest movie out there, Independence Day. But why was this one such a big hit? Well, using some, at the time, groundbreaking CGI techniques, it was able to show the effects of a full-scale alien invasion on the planet in a way that hadn't been seen before. Of course, layered throughout this was a human story too. And while Will Smith and Bill Pullman may have gotten the majority of this, Jeff Goldblum's David Levinson fully carries his weight as a satellite engineer who figures out a way to defeat the extraterrestrial threat. In fact, so much confidence did director Roland Emmerich have in Goldblum's abilities to get this humanity across, he'd actually allow him to improvise most of his dialogue. The virus is in. All we can do now is pray. Number four, The Big Chill. And I will accompany you anywhere. I'll even get you into a lanes. <laughs> I thought a lanes was dead. That's why I can get you guys in. <laughs> Once you get to a certain age, keeping in contact with your old friends can become a difficult thing to do. After all, everyone's life starts to branch off eventually, making it harder to get everyone together in the same room at the same time. And when it comes to the 1983 hit comedy drama, The Big Chill, it's the death of one of their own that forces this group of old college friends to get back together after 15 long years. As these friends reunite, however, it's arguably Jeff Goldblum's Michael Gold who presents himself as the star of the show with his excellent comedic performance. But it wasn't too hard for him to get into character for this one because his on-screen girlfriend would actually be played by his real-life wife at the time, Patricia Gall. That's what's great about the outdoors, you know, it's one giant toilet. Maybe you should uh, put a spot like this in your club. Number three, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Ah, Jack. How was the book party? Is that Kipner's new book? It's rare that a remake ever manages to be better than the original. In fact, throughout film history, you could probably only realistically name a handful. That said, the 1978 version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers certainly falls within this list. And a large part of the reason for that is the excellent performance given by Jeff Goldblum as Jack Belichick, an aspiring writer who gets caught up in a scheme to foil an alien invasion. Of course, with this invasion seeing the aliens replacing characters with pod versions of themselves, it can be hard to figure out who you can trust at any point here. And Goldblum plays up to this perfectly with his paranoid performance throughout. And, as it happens, this role would be credited as the one where he first developed his now famous fumfering technique. Number two, The Fly. I know what the disease wants. It wants to turn me into something else. What do you think, a fly? Am I becoming a 185-pound fly? Appearing in one great remake is an achievement, but appearing in two is almost unheard of in Hollywood. And that's what makes Jeff Goldblum's performance in David Cronenberg's 1986 hit, The Fly, so special then, as it just shows how good he is. Of course, it's not just him, though, because here, the practical effects take center stage. And the reason they're needed is because the story shows us the physical and mental descent of Goldblum's mad scientist, Jeff Brundle, as he gradually transforms into a fly. Yes, it's a gruesome one to watch, and not one for the faint of heart. But it was just as hard for Goldblum to film, as it turns out, because, while in the later stages of decay, he'd have to sit in a makeup chair for five hours every morning so as to get ready. Come together there. You, me, and the baby. Our number one pick is Jurassic Park. This is, this is some species that was obliterated by deforestation. Dinosaurs uh, uh, had their shot and nature selected them for extinction. In terms of what special effects can do in cinema, there's the era before Jurassic Park and the era after it. And that's because, taking dinosaurs and bringing them back to life in a truly convincing way, this one changed the game completely. But it's not all about the effects here because, outside of that, there's the story of a group of people trying their best to survive a theme park where all of the previously extinct attractions have gotten loose. And arguably, the star of the whole show throughout this is Jeff Goldblum as Dr. Ian Malcolm, a mathematician who manages to predict all the chaos that will eventually happen from the very start. Of course, this role would also turn Goldblum into something of a sex symbol in real life. And it was also enough to see his co-star, Laura Dern, fall for him too as the two would begin dating at this point. Looking at the film's ratings, we find that Jurassic Park received a very good 8.2 out of 10 on IMDb.com, but a not as strong 68 from Metacritic, 
Rotten Tomatoes, on the other hand, would give it 92% on the tomato meter with an equally impressive 91% given by the audience. And there we have it, the top 10 Jeff Goldblum movies of all time. No doubt you have your own list, so be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and get alerted of our next video. We'll hope to see you soon!